Sometimes it just becomes fashionable for people not to go to church. We oh. defy fashion. Oh yes, amen. Someone say I defy fashion. I defy fashion in Jesus name. In Jesus name. You know it's always important to be found in the house of the Lord. Oh yes. Are you hearing me? Do you do you believe it? Oh yes. Ah. Uh, you know Hebrews chapter 10 verse number 25. Hebrews 10:25. I want you to see something there. Hebrews 10:25. We can remain in rising up. We can remain standing. Amen. One, two, three, go. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. One more time. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as ye see the day approaching. One more time. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as ye see the day approaching. Now I want you to look at it from the TPT version. One, two, three, go. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together, as some have formed the habit of doing. Because we need each other, in fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that day dawning. Did you see that? Oh, yes. Did you see that? What does he say? He says, this is not the time to pull away and neglect what? Meeting together. As some have formed what? The habit of doing. Hey. Hey. Did you see that? Oh, yes. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Always be in the house of the Lord. Always be in the house of the Lord. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11. One, two, three, go. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. One more time. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. The Bible is talking about a people who are victorious. That, that group of people overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb. Many of us, we do know and understand the power in the blood. We've read books, we've heard messages, we've talked about the power in the blood. Amen. And indeed it's true, there's power in the blood. Oh yes. The blood of Christ. It is powerful not only because that blood was sinless. It is powerful because that blood is full of power. Oh, yes. I know it was sinless. It didn't have any sin in it. But that blood had power in it. Oh, yes. And on top of that, the blood had been given to people by God Almighty as a means. As a means of substitution. The problem with God and the weakness with God, he is too faithful to change his own word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know whether you heard what I've said. Oh, yes. Amen. The problem with God and the weakness with God is that he is too faithful to change his word. And the biggest mistake God can do is to release the word. Because once he has spoken it, he can't take it back. Amen. And that became a problem, a big, big problem. Because he said, the soul that sinneth must die. So even if he loved man, 
as much as he loved him. He could not change that statement. Yes. As long as that soul had sinned, it had to die. Because that's the integrity of his word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, yes. That's the integrity of his word. And God would defend his integrity with everything that he is. Amen. Mm -mm, you're not hearing me. Oh, we are following. God will make sure that his integrity is intact. No matter what happens. Oh, yes. Even if it means to eliminate a few people. Amen. He will. Because he must defend his integrity. Oh, yes. He ordained and put in place that every man that sinneth must what? Die. But because of his love, he had to think about a way how to beat his own weight. By giving man a substitute to die in their place. Hey. Oh, yes. So that's why the first death to happen happened after the creation of Adam and Eve. It happened in the Garden of Eden. When God had to kill an animal. Amen. We only hear about the hide that God used to cover man. But it was a prophecy. Yes. That an animal must die to cover the sin of man. Oh, yes. An animal must die to cover the life of a man. Oh, yes. An animal must die to substitute the life of a man. Otherwise, according to the integrity of God, Adam was supposed to die on the very day they sinned. That would have put God back to square zero. Amen. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Oh, yes. So he had to kill something. Yes. In order to preserve the life of Adam and Eve. Amen. That's why talking about the blood gives you an unquestionable victory. Because what the blood does is it stands in your place. Yes. It gives you an equation about victory. Amen. The devil has no answer against the blood. Amen. He can drag your reputation into the mud. He can slander you. He can say nonsense things about your life. But the moment you begin to make a declaration about the blood, he has no answer against the blood because that blood is not your blood. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. A blood that was sinless. A blood that was faultless. Oh, yes. But beyond the blood being sinless and faultless, the blood of Jesus was the life of Christ. Oh, yes. Ah, you're not hearing me. We are following, Papa. Because according to Leviticus chapter 17, can we go there for a moment? Someone say neighbor. Neighbor. Are you here? Are you here? What did they say? They are here, Papa. They are here? Oh, yes. Oh, they have gone home. Oh, no. Leviticus 17, verse number 11. One, two, three, go. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. One more time. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. You see, for the blood of of the flesh is in the, the the life of the flesh is in the what blood. So it's not just a question of that red liquid; it's life. So Jesus shedding his own blood, it went beyond shedding the liquid substance. Oh yes, he was shedding his own life. Yes, on behalf of your life. Oh yes, he paid his life on behalf of your life. Are you hearing me? So that's why it gets a bit deeper when we go to Holy Communion. He says, drink my blood. Eat my flesh. Are you hearing me? So the Holy Communion is, a, is probably one of the highest prophetic things that God gave to the church. Yes, amen. Although the church thinks it's a symbol. It's not a symbol. That's a prophetic act. Yes. When you take the cup... When you say, I am drinking the blood of Jesus, you are not just talking about blood as in a red substance. You are drinking the life of Christ oh, into your yes. system. Oh, yes. 
Are you hearing me? So you need to elevate your revelation when you are partaking Holy Communion. It's not just a symbol symbolizing something. Uh -uh. Jesus says, drink my blood, for my blood is life indeed. Are you hearing me? It is drink indeed. My flesh is meat indeed. Am I talking to somebody right here? Oh, yes. So you need to understand that when we, we, we partake of the Lord's table, we are operating on the highest dimension of spirituality. Oh, yes. That's why even wizards and witches, they drink blood. Oh, you're not hearing me. Oh, yes. That's why Satanists drink what? Blood. And they go for the purest blood they can find. So they will go for the blood of little people, babies. Are you hearing me? Because that's the purest blood they can find. Yes. Why? They are trying to partake of the purest life into their system. Oh, yes. And when they partake of that life, they think they are a bit stronger and more powerful now. They begin to do greater things in the kingdom of darkness. But for you as a child of oh, the living yes. God, when you partake the blood of Christ, oh, yes. are you hearing me? You are elevated the dimension of divinity. Oh, yes. Am I talking to somebody right here? Shout yes! Yes! La suka doshka telamando. I receive. Rete site izuvai. I receive. Hey! Hey! You are no longer ordinary. When you partake the blood of Jesus, you are partaking the life of Christ into your system. The only power that counsels the power in the blood of Jesus is the power of your mind. Amen. God even, Papa. Can I say that again? Oh, yes. The only power that counsels the power in the blood of Jesus is the power of your mind. Oh, yes. When you do not have revelation. Amen. Oh, oh yes. God even, Papa. Can I go one level deeper? Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Le copara dosh catis. I receive. Rendorobo secariazo. I receive. Paruka doske interhas. I receive. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29 and 30. You'll be shocked. <laughs> Already shocked. Let me finish you off. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. One, two, three, go. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Did you see that? Drinking unworthily the blood of the Lamb and eating unworthily, it's talking about lack of revelation. You have no idea what you are doing. You don't understand what you are eating. You don't understand what you are drinking. And then you begin to treat it and co as, as, as if it's something common. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes. But when you begin to function by revelation, when you understand what you are doing, the Bible says you, you, you literally, you literally, oh my God, you're not hearing me. You literally begin to partake life into your system. Oh, yes. He says people without revelation, although they eat the blood, they, they drink the blood and eat the body, they sleep and they die. Oh, yes. They are dying. Amen. And yet they've got a life-giving power yes. given to them in the Holy Communion. Oh, yes. Are you hearing me? So the Bible says our brothers, they understood the power in the blood. So when the devil came to attack, they begin to speak about the blood of Jesus. They began to proclaim the blood of Christ. They began to announce the blood of Christ. That they were not saved by their own blood. They were not saved by the blood of animals, but by the blood of Jesus. Oh, yes. You see, when you begin to fight the devil against, against the devil by the blood of Christ, you're going to have the victory. Why? He doesn't have an answer against the blood. Amen. He can start. Oh, my God. You see, Baba. the devil has got access to God more than you think. He is not stopped from going into the presence of God. Yes, amen. He is not stopped from booking an appointment with God. He books appointments and he's granted appointments. Oh, yes. And when his time comes, he walks in and says, This is my hour. Oh, oh, angels, get out of here. I need to talk to the Almighty God. 
and accuse the brethren and the, and the sisters. Oh, yes. He has got times when he goes there to accuse you. Oh, yes. And accuse everything about you. Amen. Accuse everything about your children. But listen to me. There is a place where you can begin to proclaim the blood of Jesus. Oh, yes. You see, that blood, the blood of Jesus, was shed in advance ahead of your sin. Oh, yes. In advance ahead of your blunders. In advance ahead of, ahead of your weakness. Are you hearing me? Even your children, even if they are walking in sin, their blood has already been shed for them. Oh, I'm yes. not going to somewhere around here. Oh, Shout yes. yes. So you can begin to proclaim the blood. Announce the blood. Announce the blood. When you speak about the blood, the devil becomes paralyzed. Oh, yes. <laughs> Someone say, I've got the victory. I've got the victory. They overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb. In other words, he has no answer to the blood. He can't do anything about it. Amen. Because it is the life of Christ. Oh, yes. It is the sinless life of Christ. Which was shed on your behalf. I receive. So it's not about your merits. It's not about your goodness or your badness. Yes, amen. Nobody is too bad to qualify for the grace of God. Amen. <laughs> Someone said the blood. The blood. Imagine if it was ourselves, our efforts, our doing. Oh my God. Amen. It would have been a disaster. Oh yes. But thank God for the blood. So our friends had a revelation. So they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Oh yes. But they had another revelation. The second revelation was what? The word of their testimony. You see, you can question one plus one. You can't question two. Because two is the answer. You can question how things are done. But you can't question the testimony. Because the testimony is the evidence. Oh, yes. The testimony is the proof. Oh, yes. You see, when you hear that verse talking about testimony there, it's amazing because the, the Greek word used there. Hmm? Can I give you the spelling? Oh, yes. And those of you who are Greek, you can pronounce it. <laughs> I don't know whether you are still here. We are following, Papa. Oh, my God. I receive. Watch this. You see, the Greek word is there is M for Mary, A for Apple, R for Roger, T for Tom, U for Umbrella, R for Roger, I for India, A for Apple. Now everyone is Greek now. Oh, yes. Amen. <laughs> eh? How does it feel like? Mar Marturia. Marturia. Or Maturia. I don't know how they pronounce it. I will not claim to know how they pronounce that. Amen. There may be a Greek among us. Uh, don't, don't butcher my language. Amen. But that's, that, that's the word testimony. Oh, yes. And testimony means evidence given. Evidence given. It is a record. It is a report. It is a record. It is a report. It is evidence given. Someone say evidence given. Evidence given. One more time. Say evidence given. Evidence given. You see, the problem that we have in the church today is people make clandestine claims without providing evidence. People make huge claims about Christ but they don't provide evidence. Amen. People preach until they are sweating into their socks. Yes. <laughs> but they don't provide not even a single evidence. Amen. They will claim about a God who heals. But they don't provide any evidence. Oh yes. They'll talk about a God who saves. But without providing evidence. 
They talk about a Jesus who delivers, but without providing what? Evidence. So it doesn't matter how huge their claims could be. It doesn't matter how big their claims could be. They should never be taken seriously. Amen. Until evidence has been provided. Oh, yes. So the Bible says, our brothers overcame the devil by the word, by, by the blood of the lamb and the evidence that they provided. Oh, yes. Amen. Someone say evidence. Evidence. You can't argue against evidence. People may question your Christ. People may question whether Jesus heals. But once you have been healed, they cannot question your healing. Oh, yes. Because your healing is the evidence. Amen. People may argue about your religion. They may argue as much as they want. They may present facts. They may even give you their degrees. Doctor of this. Doctor of that philosophy. Doctor of that. But if they do not have evidence. Oh yes. Amen. They are just the professors. Yes. Amen. <laughs> they are what? The only amen, prophets, amen. they talk. Yes. That's why a person with evidence is more powerful than a professor. Oh, yes. oh you are not hearing amen. me. You are not hearing me. A person with evidence is more what? Powerful than a professor. That's why Peter, when he stood before the Sanhedrin, they looked at him and said, no, 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 wait a minute. The guy is uneducated. But why is he speaking with power? Yes. Someone say evidence. Evidence. Wow. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Someone say evidence. Evidence. You see, Peter and John, they were arrested. And they were put on trial. These were doctors of the law. They knew the law of Moses inside out. They had PhDs in the law of Moses. They put them on trial. So they quoted a different section, section this, subsection this and this, subsection. They say, yeah, continue to. Can you quote some more? Hey, subsection, section this, this. After they finished, they say, wait a minute. We walked with him. We handled the word of truth. Amen. We saw the miracles. Oh, yes. And we went ahead and performed the miracles. Oh, yes. Are you hearing me? When the Sanhedrin saw the lame guy who had been healed standing there, they could not argue against the evidence. Amen, amen. You are not hearing me. They could not argue against what? The evidence. We can all theorize. As long as we are living in the world of theories, you have no power. Yes, amen. Because the only person with power is the one with what? Evidence. Wow. You're not hearing me. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? We are following. Someone say evidence. Evidence. When they saw the man who had been a lame standing there and been healed, they tried to twist the evidence. They said, go get the parents. And then they squeezed the parents. Do you really claim that this is your real son? <laughs> And they're like, yeah. Do you really claim that he was born a lamb? And they're like, yeah. Amen. But how is he healed? He's of age. Ask him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Ask him. He's grown up. Ask him. Ask the evidence. Yes. Someone say, Ask the evidence. Ask the evidence. So. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man he sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness. Someone say witness. Witness. Say evidence. Evidence. The word testimony and witness is the same word in Greek. Wow. So when Jesus said in the book of Acts, you shall receive power 
and you shall be witnesses unto me. You shall be evidences. You are not hearing me. Oh, yes. You shall be what? Evidences. Wow. Power, Papa. <laughs> Say neighbor. Neighbor. Hey. Hey. He said you shall be witnesses. And it's the same word evidence. It's the same word testimony. So Jesus said when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, you shall become a testimony. Oh, yes. Oh, you're not hearing me. You shall become what? A testimony. La Sakatayama. I receive. Wrong I receive. You see, people are not becoming born again today because they are not testimonies. Amen. We love talking, but we don't, we are not good at presenting the evidence. Yes, amen. And in our minds, we think sharing Christ to people is when we take their Bible, begin to read the stories to them. They've heard it all. Yes, amen. In fact, they can they can read it to you better than even yourself the way you read it. Amen. They've heard it all. But when you become the evidence. Oh, yes. When you become the witness of the power of God. Oh, yes. Then you, no one can argue against you. Amen. Because you are the evidence. Oh, yes. So Jesus says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be evidences unto me. Wow. Go deeper, Papa. Go deeper. <laughs> hey! Hey! Say neighbor. Neighbor. Get ready. Get ready. This one you're looking at. This one you're looking at. Is the evidence. Is the evidence. Oh, yes. Talk about the healing of God. I am the evidence. Oh, yes. Talk about the love of God. I am the evidence. Oh, yes. Talk about the mercy of God. I am the evidence. Oh, yes. Talk about someone that was deserving. I am the evidence. Oh, yes. I'm going to talk to someone right here. Shout yes. Yes. <laughs> Say I am the evidence. I am the evidence. Talk about people that were looked down upon. They thought they would never become nothing in life. I am the evidence. People can talk about you. People can put you down. People can, you know, they can do whatever they want. But listen to me. Listen to me. The God that you are serving takes the poor from the dung hill and lifts them up. Say, I am the evidence. I am the evidence. <laughs> Shout here. Yes. Yes. I receive. So I am the evidence. I am the evidence. Ha! Huh. I am the evidence of God's deliverance. Oh, yes. I was a very, very troublesome young guy. Me, as handsome as I am. <laughs> Amen. I know people who got me this, so this, this, one, this, this one must have been a very holy young man. Oh no. Go, go deeper, Papa. <laughs> Should I go deeper or not? Oh yes. You gonna run away all of you here. <laughs> hey! Thank God. Oh yes. Thank God it's not under the blood. Amen. I know. I've confused your theology. I've confused your theology. Because people say, no, my past is under under the, the blood of Christ. No. No, can I go a little deeper? Go deeper, Papa. My past is not under the blood. Mm. I have no past. Yes. Amen. Oh, boy. I have no past. But what am I talking about? I'm talking about, about that one who came from my father and my mother. Oh, yes. Amen. That one. That one. He was a bad boy. Oh, yes. <laughs> Until he died in Christ. Amen. And a new one came out. Oh. Hey. 
And the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. What things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Shout ye! <laughs> hey, hey. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes. So if you talk about the power of God to begin a new beginning in somebody's life, I am the evidence. I am the evidence. Oh, yes. So if I meet someone who is going through a troubled life, I can say, wait a minute. This one that I'm talking to, can he die? And a new one can come up. Oh, yes, amen. They will say, how is that possible? You say, no, 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 no. Don't even ask the question, how is that possible? Because I am the evidence. You are not hearing me. Yes. I am the what? The evidence. I know what was there before this one came up. I know what kind of life it was. Oh, yes. I know how difficult it was until I met Christ. When I was born again in Christ, I became a new creature. Oh, all yes. the things passed away. Behold, all things have become new and all things are of God. Are you hearing me? What are you looking at? All things are of God. <laughs> hey! 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 The Bible says, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us unto himself, and hath given to us huh, the what? The minister of what? Reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them, and hath given to us the weight of reconciliation. Now then we ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you, be reconciled to God, for he hath made him sin for us, him who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Am I turn to someone right here? Shout here! Yes. Ah. My God. My God. You are not. Imagine. Imagine. Ephesians 5 verse number 8 says, For you were sometimes darkness. You were sometimes darkness. But now are you light in the Lord. Oh, yes. So can the darkness become light? Say yes. Yes. Where's the evidence? I am the evidence. Oh, yes. Amen. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Oh, yes. Darkness can become what? Light. Scientists will sit down and start trying to go into their little, little machines to peep. And oh, yes, amen. You are bigger than scientists. Oh, yes, amen. Say, so I'm the evidence. I am the evidence. So Jesus says, you shall be evidences unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, until the uttermost parts of the earth. Our problem is we try to concord a message and give to people for people to become born again. Yes. That's where we miss it. Each one of you, as long as you have the evidence, present your evidence. Yes, amen. The simplicity of the gospel is presenting your evidence. Wow. It's in no, don't, don't worry about the complication of religion. Yes. They make it very complicated. Amen. And they have to make it very complicated so they can get PhDs in that complication. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Listen to me. If Jesus has saved you, you are qualified. Oh, yes. If Jesus has delivered you, you are qualified. If God has healed you, you are qualified. Oh, yes. Say, I'm qualified. I am qualified. I am the evidence. I am the evidence. Ha! Huh? You know, you know what the Pharisees said? They told the guy who was the evidence. They said, now you, you need to give praise to God. Because this man, we know this man is a sinner. The man said, wait a minute. What are you talking about? 
They say, no, no, no. This Jesus is a sinner. They say, no, wait a minute. I'm, I don't have evidence about that. I've got only one evidence. Yes. I was blind. But now, I see. Oh, yes. I've got evidence oh, about yes. that. I was lame, but now I can walk. I've got evidence about that. Am I talking to somebody right here? Shout yes. Yes. He didn't have evidence that Jesus was a sinner. Where was the evidence? Ha! Huh? The only evidence I have, I was blind. But now, I can see. Let's talk about that. They're like, ah, yo, you were born in for a sinner. They so kicked him out. <laughs> Who cares? Yes. You can't fight against evidence. Amen. So most of us, we lose the fights against the devil because we don't use what God has given us. We use our, we concord our own weapons and then we begin to use them. Yes. So the devil beats us and beats us again. But there are two weapons that you need to begin to use every single day. The blood of the lamb and your testimony. Oh, yes. It's a weapon. The enemy cannot argue against that. Amen. He can't. He cannot and he will never win. Even when you are facing a brand new battle, can you hear? Can you listen to me? Even if you are facing a brand new battle, do you know your evidence? What God did for you yesterday. Oh, yes. What God did for you last week. What God did for you last year. That's why you've got a Bible, a collection of what God did with people and for people. Oh, yes. When you read what God has done for people and with people, you begin to build a faith inside your life that when you meet a new problem tomorrow, you are able to stand and say, no, 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 wait a minute. The Jehovah who saved me from the lion, the God who saved me from the bear, he shall save me from you, Goliath. And today I'm going to bring you down, Goliath. Are you hearing me? Shout yes. Yes. Say evidence. Evidence. Imagine the king didn't have any evidence. King Saul. He didn't have any evidence. So when Goliath came, the king was the fastest runner. Amen. <laughs> How do I know it? He was the tallest of them all. <laughs> Oh, yes. It's in your Bible. He was the tallest. So when he takes one step, it's like a two meters, and you are busy taking half a meter, half a meter. Amen. <laughs> but him, two meters, two, two run. <laughs> so, so when, when David came, I said, I can fight that guy. The king said, that guy has got experience in war. You do not have any experience. How come are you able to fight him? David said, your servant was taking care of his father's sheep. Oh, yes. And one day, a lion came and he grabbed one of the lambs. And he chased the lion, grabbed them by the, by the beard, Amen. <laughs> Someone say evidence. Evidence. <laughs> he said, but the what? The beard. And I smote him. That's what he says. But the beard. And I smote him. Oh, yes. And then another day, a bear came. Took another lamb. I went after the bear. The bear said, no, no, you can't take this one. It turned around to go after him. He said, when it turned around, I grabbed it, killed it again. Oh, yes. Amen. So he said, your servant both killed the lion and the bear. And the God who saved me from the lion, the God who saved me oh, from yes. the bear, oh, yes. is the same Jehovah. Oh, yes. He's going to save me from Goliath. Are you hearing me? Say evidence. Evidence. So I will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. You've got evidence. Oh, yes. Use it against the devil. The world is clever enough to know that if they are bringing a charge against you in the courts of law, what do they look for? Evidence. evidence. 
Wow, wow, wow. They look for evidence to incriminate you. And you prove beyond any reasonable doubt. Oh, yes. If they put you on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Amen. Some of you will be acquitted. Yes. Amen. <laughs> because the evidence is weak. We call it circumstantial evidence. I, I, I used to go to church every Sunday. It's circumstantial. It's not incriminating a lot. Oh dear, Baba. It's not incriminating a lot. But if someone says, I saw you cast not a demon. I think that one is a bit more incriminating. Oh, yes. Amen. I saw you preaching your Jesus. Telling people about your Jesus. Oh, yes. I think that one is incriminating a lot. Is there enough evidence? We can weed the world around us. By presenting our evidence. Yes, amen. We can defeat the arguments of people by presenting our evidence. Don't get entangled in arguments about verses. Yes. In arguments about theological concepts. Uh -uh, they are useless. They are useless. Quickly, take them to your evidence. Amen. Quickly, do whatever it takes to divert their attention. Yes. From the subject matter to your evidence. Oh, yes. Amen. Are you hearing me? Talk about what God has done for you. Talk about where God got you from. Talk about what God is doing in your life. Talk about the testimonies that what God is doing in your life. When you begin to share the testimony, the devil is silenced. He can't argue against your testimony. Oh, yes. Am I talking to somebody right here? Oh, yes. Shout yes. Yes. He can't argue against your testimony. He cannot. That's where you get your victory. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their evidence. The word of their testimony. Oh, yes. You can't argue against the evidence. Oh, yes. It's a folly. It's a stupidity. You argue against evidence. <laughs> power, Papa, power. Someone say power. Power. Shout Jesus. Jesus. That's my boss. Rise on your feet. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. From this day forward. From this day forward. I am a living testimony. I am a living testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'll present my evidence. I'll present my evidence. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Streams International Prophetic Church. Transforming lives by the power of prophetic revelation. Your lives will never be the same again. Please remain connected at www.streams.org.au.